London, everywhere, and friends and neighbours that Kate has known all her life, plus of course family. So it's been an absolutely brilliant day, and for me, it was a bit of a ring into the family, but I count myself in now. Come on up. <laughs> to see Kate and Liz come down that aisle today was the most emotional, proudest moment of my whole life. And Kate looked absolutely stunning, and Doug looked absolutely stunned. <laughs> <laughs> And Liz looked up to me. And Liz, no, I've already, I've cleared this with Liz. I've cleared with Liz. Every time I say Kate looks stunning, I mean her as well. Yeah. <laughs> but I would like, actually, at this point, to pay tribute to Liz. I mean, Liz is Kate's best friend. She's a confidant. She's been with her thick and thin, highs and lows, and Liz has always been there for Kate. So, Liz, we'd like to thank you for the wonderful part you've played with Kate in this day. Thank you. I, I've met most people in this room, some people in this room I just haven't met. And when you look at Kate, tall, slim, stunningly gorgeous, intelligent, you might have worked out that we aren't actually biologically related. <laughs> <laughs> and when Liz said, are you going to do a short speech? I said, well, that's all I can do. <laughs> but I, I've been in their lives now for going on for 20 years, and it's a proud moment for me to stand up today and say a few words about Kate. Now, some of us that know Kate very well know that she's very organised. And for people involved in the wedding today, she provided us with sheets for today. This is all for today. Five pages. <laughs> and I tell you, I know more about some of you than you can do yourself. This is notes to... Russian Hall staff, Rob. If he asks for a pack of cards and a small green table, please decline. <laughs> yeah? Doug. If Doug is anywhere near Rob with a pack of cards and a small table, please handcuff and bring him to my room. Yeah. So Kate has gone through this. It starts 7.010, or 7.10, wake up. <laughs> and it goes through 101 things that I've got to do and then it gets to the page about my speech David please don't embarrass me or swear <laughs> and I read that and I thought bollocks <laughs> <laughs> and I've been looking up the internet and I thought that's what this is all about so I'm going to start with a few things <laughs> that you may not know about Kate. Oh Kate was born in Northampton General Hospital. And from Northampton General Hospital, she came back and lived in Northampton for all her life. She went to school at Madewell Primary. And at Madewell Primary School, she, with Elizabeth there, formed a long, lifelong relationship with a very special person. And I've got that very special person proof here. It is a life membership, Dennis the Menace Fan Club. <laughs> now in case you don't believe me, I open this up, oh this thing about passwords. Ding dong. And here, name, Kate Elizabeth Coveney, address, oh, it was five Foxhall Cottages, date 11th of April 87. So that's when Kate joined Dennis the Menace family. <laughs> then she went through the pony phase. <laughs> now, if any of you here have got young girls on the way, ponies are the last thing you want to get involved in because they cost you a fortune. You end up doing all the mucking out yeah. and all the cleaning, 
and the daughter strolls down on Saturday morning and rides for an hour or two and then goes home. <laughs> so Kay went through the pony stage, then she went to Southfield School for Girls. Now at Southfield School for Girls there was one thing missing, the M word, music. <laughs> You were thinking men, but it was music. <laughs> you have the ponies for that. And she, actually, and now not many people realise this, Kate actually was a music scholar. She got a music scholarship to Wellingborough School. And the instrument she played was... Bassoon. The bassoon! <laughs> now, if you don't know what a bassoon is, it's like a drain pipe <laughs> that you sort of blow. And Kate went to Wellingborough School. And she did very well at Wellingborough School and she got a university place at Glasgow University. And Kate and I and Liz, we went up to Glasgow University and on the first night there, we were slightly worried because the halls of residence and all the pubs in the locality didn't have glass and windows, they just had wire mesh. And we thought, oh, this is gonna be interesting. And <laughs> Kate didn't quite get on there, but she transferred to Loughborough University, where she did extremely well. She partied away through a degree. She got, uh, was it 2 2 2 1 <laughs> in English? <laughs> and then she started on a series of gap years. <laughs> <laughs> because she'd heard if you go to a school like Wellingbury, you should have a gap year. So she started her gap years. And she had some great jobs, and I want to talk about two of them. The first one, she came to my school, Maybell Hall, where the wedding was today in the church, and she was a matron. And her first day didn't start very well because she was there and a little boy came up and said, Matron, I've just been sick. And she went, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're supposed to be fixing that. <laughs> but she was much loved. But the second job she had was even better. She worked for a local radio station, KCBC. Is anyone here from Kettering or Corby? Oh, great. <laughs> KCBC, Kettering Corby Broadcasting Corporation. Surprisingly, they've now changed the name to Connect FM. But Kate worked in reception for KCBC. And people in Corby and Kettering aren't well known for getting competitions correct. And the competitions used to be, right, we've got a dinner for two today at Wicksteed Park. All you have to do is ring up and say, what is the capital of France? <laughs> and no one would get it right. <laughs> People would ring up and eventually the, the DJ would say, Kate, Kate, you've got to ring and enter this competition because they have to have somebody that gets it wrong and somebody that gets it right. But Kate always had to get it wrong. <laughs> oh, who's this calling? It's Kate. Where are you from? I'm calling from Foxhall. That's great, Kate. What is the capital of France? Uh, Athens? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Julie in Oxford. Julie, what's the capital of France? Um, Bulgaria? You said Paris. Well done. <laughs> and Kate did this for weeks and weeks and weeks until she decided, following Liz and following myself, and Julie and David and Richard and Sarah and a lot of people she knew, she wanted to become a teacher. And she went to East London University to do a PGCE and she did very, very well and graduated with a PGCE as a teacher and eventually ended up working at Arnold House where she had three wonderfully happy years. And thank you to all for all the, the great effort that you put into Kate and keeping us stable in London. <laughs> yeah. Then she decided she would do some psychotherapy courses and she undertook an MA. She passed her MA, graduated last year, and a glistening career lay before her. <laughs> then she met Doug. <laughs> now, looking up the magic interweb net job, I'm now supposed to talk about Doug and the joys of marriage. Having been with Liz for nearly 20 years, she still won't marry me. I haven't got much comment on that. <laughs> I'd like to say to Doug that since we've got to know Doug, we've absolutely fallen in love with him. He's a really wonderful guy. And 
He loves Kate. And for us, that is the greatest joy that we could have for Kate, that she 